to be tonight's total meeting. Let's have order in the room, please. Before we get started, I'm going to invite Zeke Tejano to come forward and make an announcement regarding... Excuse me. I'm going to have Zeke Tejano come forward and make an announcement regarding his services. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just a quick uh, announcement for any Spanish speakers in the audience. 
Si hay alguien que necesite servicio de interpretación porque no entiendan el inglés, por favor pasen a la mesa de allá atrás en esa esquina donde está mi compañera María Luisa con las manos levantadas. Nosotros vamos a interpretar en simultáneo. Ahora es cuando tienen que ir por sus eh, audífonos para poder escuchar. Gracias. Empezamos en un minuto más tarde. All right, so for the record, this is a public meeting being conducted by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, or TCEQ for short. My name is Brad Patterson. I work at the TCEQ in the Office of the Chief Clerk, and I'll be the moderator for tonight's public meeting. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to go over the agenda for tonight's meeting. Uh, before I do that, a few quick housekeeping announcements. Uh, first of all, if you have a cell phone or paging device with you, please turn it off or put it into silent mode. Uh, secondly, uh, the restrooms, the facilities, uh, if you were to go back out the doors in the back and head towards the escalators, uh, before you get to the escalator was the uh, ladies' room. If you go on past the escalator, uh, you'll come upon the men's room on the left. Uh, there is some water uh, on tables to my left uh, that I believe you're welcome to. And then finally, before you came into the room tonight, uh, TCQ had a registration table set up in the hallway. Uh, there was a place for you. Uh, we had registration forms set out. On the form, there was a place for you to uh, place your name, mailing address. There were boxes to check if you wanted to be added to the mailing list for this application. There was a box to check if you wanted to provide formal oral comments during tonight's meeting. Um, while I'm on that subject, uh, we've been keeping track of the number of folks who have signed up to comment. Uh, so far, we're close to 100, uh, which is fine. But what that means is we'll need to move expeditiously and proficiently in order to give everyone an opportunity to provide their comments. So a couple of things. First of all, uh, for the formal comment session, if you've signed up to comment, you should expect to have two minutes to comment, uh, two minute time limit for commenting when we get to that part of the meeting. If two minutes is not enough time for you, we can't accept written comments. You can go back out to the registration table, uh, either pull your form and write on the back of your, of your form, or, or you can pull a blank registration form and use that. But when we come to the oral testimony part of tonight's meeting, you'll have two minutes. Um, so in terms of the format for the meeting, uh, we'll start off with some introductions and presentations. I'll introduce the folks that are here tonight representing the city of Corpus Christi. Uh, they'll briefly present on the application, explain what it is that they're asking TCQ for. Um, and then I'll introduce the folks that are here from TCQ who are assigned to the project. Uh, they will introduce themselves and explain their role in the process Uh, they'll each just take a few minutes to do that. Uh, after the intros and presentations, we will have a brief question and answer session. Um, it'll be brief because, again, uh, we've got about 100 folks that have signed up to provide comments, and so we need to save time for the formal comment session, which is the third part of the meeting. During the formal comment session, I'll call you up in the order in which you signed up and indicated that you wanted to provide comments. Uh, you'll come up to the microphone, state your name for the record, and then provide your comments. Uh, so that's the agenda for tonight's meeting. Um, this is a meeting on an application by the city of Corpus Christi. It's for a proposed DPDS permit. Uh, the permit number would be WQ00052890000. Uh, this meeting was requested by Representative Abel Herrero. Um, I'm not sure if Representative Herrero or any of the staff are in the room tonight, but we appreciate their interest in the application. Uh, we also understand that there's been some other legislative offices that have expressed interest in the application, and they may have staff here as well tonight. Uh, and so we appreciate that, uh, as well as any uh, local city and county officials that are present. Um, I'm going to talk a minute to talk about uh, meeting, meeting decorum. Uh, the success of tonight's meeting depends on the cooperation and patience of everyone in the room. Um, I understand that there are folks that may have different opinions on this application. Uh, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. And everyone who wishes to share their opinion will be given an opportunity to do so. Uh, but if you hear someone expressing an opinion that you don't agree with or that you don't like, please do not shout them down or boo at them. Like I said, you'll be given an opportunity to share your opinion as well. Um, also, to keep the meeting moving in an orderly fashion, um, please uh, be mindful of uh, your tone and your language, um, the use of um, abusive language, the making of threats, yelling, shouting are not acceptable. Uh, that type of behavior may cause you to be asked to be 
to leave the meeting. Uh, so please be mindful of that. Uh, so with that, we'll get started with uh, the first part of the meeting, which is introductions and presentations. Uh, first here tonight, on behalf of the city of Corpus Christi, we have Drew Molly and Jason Cochran. And I'll turn the floor over to Drew to present on the application. Okay, thank you, Brad. <clears throat> Good evening, and uh, thank you for allowing me to be here tonight. The city of Corpus Christi truly appreciates being a part of this important TCQ public meeting. My name is, uh, as Brad just mentioned, my name is Drew Molly, Chief Operating Officer for Corpus Christi Water. With me tonight is Jason Cochran, Project Manager for Freese and Nickel. Um, the city of Corpus Christi has been looking at seawater desalination as a solution to water scarcity in the coastal bend for over 10 years. As part of this project, we are pursuing a Texas Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit to authorize the discharge of water treatment concentrate from the Inner Harbor Desalination Treatment Plant at a daily average flow not to exceed 51.5 million gallons per day. The city submitted this application in January of 2020. The city assembled an expert technical team to, uh, to collect field data and perform extensive modeling to develop the permit application. 12 months of water quality sampling was conducted as well as six months of collecting ambient velocity data. The application is built on reliable and sound science. Notwithstanding all of the benefits the region will gain from the project, the city's top priority is protecting the bay and ensuring it remains vibrant. After securing our water future is even more important given the ongoing drought conditions here in this part of Texas, which have resulted in our reservoirs being over 70% empty leading us to implement stage two drought restrictions. Thank you TCEQ for holding this public meeting and thank you to everyone here who will be providing comments this evening. Your input is very important and much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I'll go ahead and introduce everyone that's here tonight from TCEQ. Uh, again, my name is Brad Patterson. I'm with the Office of the Chief Clerk. Uh, on my far left is sitting Jim Fernandez who's operating our sound and recording equipment. Uh, in addition to amplifying sound, we're also making a recording of the entire meeting uh, in order to hear you tonight uh, and also in order to pick you up on the recording. Uh, anyone who speaks will need to do so into a microphone. Uh, we've set up a public mic here in the center for the public to use uh, during the informal discussion session uh, and more importantly to use during the formal comment section. Uh, out of the registration table from my office were Deanna Avalos and Jesus Barcena helping to get registered uh, for the meeting. Uh, Deanna and Jesus will be out there for the rest of the meeting. Uh, and so like I said, if you need to go out there and provide written comments, uh, they can, they're out there to help you with that. If you have written comments with you tonight, uh, be sure and turn them into the registration table before you leave. Uh, from the Water Quality Division, we have Thomas Starr, Jim Mahawk, and Michelle Lavery. Uh, and then from the Environmental Law Division is Kathy Humphreys. Uh, Kathy is here tonight uh, representing the Executive Director. Uh, and then Sheldon Wayne is here tonight from the Office of Public Interest Council. Uh, from our External Relations Division, Laura Lopez is here to help any uh, media members that are present. Uh, Clay Kelly is here from our Intergovernmental Relations Office. Uh, here, uh, he's available for any uh, local elected officials that might have questions. Uh, and then from our Regional Office in Corpus, we have Susan Cluis, Melanie Edwards, and Zach Fuqua. Uh, our regional office is where our environmental investigators work out of. Uh, if you ever had any concerns about any facility that TCQ regulates uh, in this area, it would be the Corpus office that you'd be contacting. Uh, they would follow up with these appropriate, conduct investigations, make reports uh, as appropriate. Uh, and so we've got a couple of staff presentations uh, tonight. So we'll start off uh, with Thomas Starr. Good evening. My name is Thomas Starr. I am the permit writer for this permit. Also with me is Jim Machuk, who conducted the modeling review for this application. And from the uh, water quality assessment section, uh, Michelle Legri, who, presents, who represents the standards reviewer. Uh, it's important that we hear from you concerning this application. So thank you for your presence uh, tonight. This ap application was received on January 22nd, 2020. The application the city of Corpus Christi proposes to discharge treated waste tr treatment water at a daily average flow not to exceed 34.3 3 million gallons per day for the initial phase and 51.5 million gallons per day for the final phase. 
The facility Inner Harbor Desalination Plant will be located at the intersection of Natchez Bay Boulevard and West Broadway Street, Corpus Christi. The treated effluent from the facility will be discharged directly to the Corpus Christi Inner Harbor in segment number 2484. A map showing the location of the facility, the discharge route, and the list of the adjacent landowners was provided in the application. We performed an administrative review of the application upon receipt to ensure that all required information is provided therein. We determined that the application is administratively complete. Our chief clerk's office mailed a notice of receipt of application and intent to obtain a permit. And this same was published in the Corpus Christi Caller Times on May 31st, 2020. Alternate language in Spanish was published in El Tejano on June 12th, 2020. We also performed a technical review of the application to ensure that the applicant adequately addressed all required technical issues, including the proposed wastewater effluent discharge route, the designated uses and dissolved oxygen criteria for the receiving water bodies, anti-degradation analysis of the discharges and identification of any endangered species that may be present in the receiving water bodies to show that wastewater from the facility will be treated to required standards and to effluent limits that will ensure protection of existing uses of, for the receiving water bodies. We analyzed how the water bodies are used or can be used, how well the water bodies can tolerate added nutrients or pollutants, and the restrictions we, we should place on the wastewater discharges to ensure that the receiving water bodies can continue to be used as they are currently used. Based on our review and analysis, we established affluent limits and conditions to be included in the draft permit designed to maintain the receiving water bodies designated uses and protect human health and aquatic life. Upon completion of the technical review, the draft permit was mailed to the applicant for review and comment. By accepting the draft permit, the owners and operators of the wastewater plant agree to follow and comply with the requirements in the draft permit. Upon acceptance by the applicant, the draft permit was filed with our office of the chief clerk who issues the notice of application and preliminary decision for mailing and newspaper publication. The applicant published this notice in the Corpus Christi Caller Times on March 15, 2024. Alternate language in Spanish was published in El Tejano on March 15, 2024. A copy of the application and draft permit is available for public viewing online with the City of Corpus Christi. I will now pass the microphone to Kathy Humphreys, our Environmental Law Division, for information on the public participation aspect of the application process and the remaining steps in the permitting process. Good evening. I'm Kathy Humphreys. I'm an attorney in the Environmental Law Division at TCAQ. Thank you for taking the time to attend tonight's meeting. My role is to explain where we are procedurally, review the application, and prepare permit. If the draft permit is issued, it will establish the conditions under which the facility must operate. Staff has preliminarily determined that, if the, that the permit, if issued, meets all statutory and regulatory requirements. The public comment period ends at the conclusion of tonight's meeting. We will respond to all comments made during the formal portion of tonight's meeting, as well as any comments previously submitted to the Office of Chief Clerk in the document called the response to comments. Everyone who has made a comment will receive a, a copy of the response to comments, as well as a letter containing our decision on the application and how to request a contested case hearing or reconsideration of the executive director's decision. A contested case hearing is an administrative hearing held by the State Office of Administrative Hearings. If you want to request a contested case hearing on this application, you must provide formal comments in writing at the, by the close of tonight's meeting. In your request for a contested case hearing, you must explain how you would be affected differently than the general public if, by the permit if it were issued, 
you also need to include the issues that you're concerned about. I will now pass the microphone to our Office of Public Interest. All right, uh, good evening, folks. My name is Sheldon Lane, and I'm a staff attorney with the Office of Public Interest Counsel. I'd like to talk with you tonight about OPIC's role in general, and then also in this specific permitting matter. OPIC, and, and again, OPIC is the Office of Public Interest Counsel. You'll hear me use that acronym. OPIC's purpose is to represent the public interest at large and to ensure that the public has had a full and fair opportunity to participate meaningfully in the decision-making process of the commission to the fullest extent authorized by the laws of Texas and the rules of the TCEQ. OPIC works independently of other TCEQ offices and any other parties. We represent the larger public interest, but do not represent individuals. We're always available to answer any questions that the public may have about the legal aspects of TCEQ's rules and permitting procedures. As Ms. Humphreys here has just explained, the public comment period extends until the end of the meeting tonight. And additionally, there may be a later opportunity to contest this permit through what's called a contested case hearing, which operates very similarly to a civil trial in state court, except as Ms. Humphreys has explained, it's, it's an administrative proceeding that takes place at the State Office of Administrative Hearings. If you wish to request a hearing in the future, it's very important that you make or have made a formal comment on the record that raises issues that you are concerned about and that are also within the jurisdiction of TCEQ as it relates to this permitting matter. If you do not raise an issue by way of public comment, you will not be able to litigate that issue in a later hearing. Following the close of the comment period, the executive director will respond to all formal comments in a document called the response to comments. Each commenter and everyone that signs up on the mailing list will receive a copy. And you'll have the opportunity to request a contested case hearing up to 30 days after the mailing of this response to comments. If a contested case hearing is held, OPIC will be a party. We participate in the hearings to examine all of the evidence that's presented by the parties to make the record as clear and complete as possible, and to make sure that the facts are fully developed so that both the judge and the commissioners of TCEQ have the information that they need to make a sound decision. A big part of our role is to make recommendations to the judge and the TCEQ commissioners based on what would be protective of health and the environment and help further the public interest consistent with the law and the rules that apply to the application and the record of evidence that's developed through the evidentiary hearing. OPIC can also assist people by answering questions about rules and procedures that apply to the hearing process. If you do have questions and would like more specific information, please feel free to ask me during the informal question and answer session tonight. Or if you prefer to speak one-on-one, -on -one, please feel free to contact me. I have business cards that um, are readily available. I'll have them up here at the table. Um, please come by and grab one. And then additionally, I'd like to just uh, offer my phone number. That's a uh, 512. 239-3144, that's my direct line, 512-239-3144. Please feel free, I encourage anyone with questions or concerns to, to, to please do contact me and we can talk through some of those. Thank you, and I'd like to conclude by just saying that we, we really look forward to receiving your questions and hearing your different perspectives and positions this evening. Thank you, folks. All right, thank you, Sheldon. Uh, that does it for introductions and presentations, so we'll move on to the informal discussion period. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this will be a brief opportunity to ask questions about the application. Uh, you'll receive a response from the TCP staff or the applicant to your question. Uh, due to the number of folks that have signed up to provide formal comments, uh, the Q&A session will last no longer than uh, until 745. So we're going to have a brief period to ask questions. Uh, because of that time constraint, uh, we're only going to take questions related to the application that's pending before TCQ, which is that application for a TPDS permit. Uh, I understand that there are other issues that are important. Uh, revolving around this project, uh, but tonight's meeting that was that was noticed uh, was to discuss the TPDS permit that's applying before TCQ. So during our question and answer time, we'll take questions about the application. Uh, anything else you're going to have to hold until after the meeting uh, or maybe make it part of your formal comments. Uh, during this part of the meeting, I'm not going to call on you. You don't have to raise your hand. If you know you have a question you'd like to ask, just come on up to the microphone and ask your question. Uh, in order to give as many people an opportunity to ask questions as possible, uh, pick your favorite question. Uh, you'll be limited to just the one question, uh, and then we'll have somebody else come up and ask a question. If there's still time, you can get back in line and ask more questions. Uh, but now is your time. Is anyone that has questions, either with TCQ staff or the applicant regarding this application? Come on up. Y'all can form a line. Thank you. Hi. Yes. Uh, welcome, TCQ. I have a question. Why did the discharge permit application change? in February of this year? Why was it amended? I have a couple of questions. Why was it amended? 
Okay. To include so, that's, No, that's that's a well, what? There, It's a two part question. Let me speak, okay. please. Why was it amended to include three million gallons a day of sludge? Was it because you all do not know how you're going to manage the brine? That's my first question. Okay. So let's let's go, go address that. Brett, can I ask clarifying questions? Or do we have time for that? Be quick. Okay, the brine, first of all, uh, is the waste product from the reverse osmosis process. That is crystal clear, but very salty. Sludge is a residual from the pretreatment process. I know. It's typically yeah. dewatered and taken to the landfill. Mm -hmm. So we know how we're gonna handle both of those things. But initially the sludge was to all go to the landfill and in February of this year, after you all have said that you've spent a decade developing desal, of this year, February of this year, that, that permit changed and it increased. And for the TCEQ, why doesn't the EPA know about this? We received okay. notice from the EPA that they haven't been given anything about this amendment. All right, let's, let's go. And ahead. when was the public notice right. uh, posted? For Thank this? you. Let's go ahead and let's go and address that question. Mm -hmm. A couple of things were amended in the application, which is why you see the application is about 250 pages. The original and all the amendments are included. So nothing is hidden. Things changed regarding the, the modeling and things changed regarding the concept for that residuals management. And the concept is dewatering at a level that would allow us to put centrate out with the concentrate. So is your answer that those 3 million gallons of sludge are going back in the bay because it's easier to manage that way than take to the landfill like you were told by an engineer, what, three years ago? All right, thank you. No, no sludge is going to go back into the water. Actually, right, that's not you. what the application thank says. You. I have one we, we more question. To, we need to move on. We got I have one more question. We, Why are you designing Excuse a plant me. like no Excuse other me. in the entire world? Right, Why is your you. plant different than thank every you. other desal plant right, in the world? I need you the microphone. Thank you. Come on up, sir. Thank you. I appreciate y'all's time. Uh, I'm just asking, okay, I, I tried to listen to the format on the questions, but I'm just curious if you can address why everyone that I've seen on the media uh, says there's too much money to pipeline a discharge all the way into the Gulf. And the reason is, is, is I, I went online and I can't find anywhere, you know, plenty in the Middle East and in California and all over there, they've got diesel plants, very successful, but nobody is putting water in a limited access a uh, uh, reservoir, and I just, I, I've lived in Corpus over 40 years. I've worked at the port. I, all the towboat operators and the crews at Hollywood right. Marine and all these people would tell us how clean our water is. So okay. is your question to Excuse me, the, sir. the design to the... I, yes, sir, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no. I just helped me to understand your question. Okay. okay, point blank. A little question. Why not I would I would do cartwheels if y'all say we're gonna we're gonna pipe it out into the Gulf. There's already four other uh, entities that are going to be doing things like this. Why not do a gathering plan like like they do in the oil field? I've okay. been in the oil field a long time. All right, thank you. So I guess the question goes to why why did you choose this design? Uh, why not pipe it further out into the Gulf? Can you can you address that? So in the siting process, we looked at about 20 sites, and that included some that would intake and discharge offshore. Yes, sir. The balance that we had to strike in selecting a location was making sure that it was environment, environmentally sustainable, balancing that with reliable. A, a new water supply for Corpus Christi doesn't make sense if it's not reliable and cost effective. And so what we found was in looking at those 20 sites, both qualitative and quanti quantitative criteria, that the optimal balance was struck at this location between environmental responsibility, reliability, and cost effectiveness. Yeah, money. All right, thank you. Money. Thank you. Very good. Next, please. Um, this question is for TCEQ because um, Friesen Nichols has never, ever built a desalination plant ever. And Drew Molly's only been in this job for three months and in Corpus Christi for one year. So I'm going to ask qualified people this question. What are the guidelines for the salinity discharge levels? All right, thank you. I, I didn't hear 
What are the guidelines? We're asking questions here. Let's keep it together. What are the guidelines me, for the selenic dis discharge levels? All right. What are the guidelines for the salinity discharge levels? So the salinity is, there's a lot of modeling that was involved. Hold in it that. real close, Michelle. Sorry, thank you. The salinity is calculated. Um, part of, so what went into that is, the, it was a, sorry, I just need to find my. <clears throat> the expected salinity um, to find the modeling was calculated using a mass balance equation, percent effluent from the critical conditions memo expected effluent salinities and ambient water quality data from the inner harbor. The expected salinity increase at the edge of the aquatic life mixing zone, which is 380 feet from the outfall, is 1.2 PBT parts per thousand over ambient. When you decrease farther away from the outfall, so just 0.3 miles away from the outfall, you're already at um, 0.38 PBT, and that's still in the inner harbor. So that is how we calculate the modeling. So. All right, thank you. Yeah. Next, please. Uh, John Weber, this question is for the city. What modeling and research were done on effects to the salinity of Nueces Bay, specifically? All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weber. So we do understand the dynamics between the Inner Harbor Ship Channel and the Noasis Bay, particularly the connection between uh, the two and the Noasis Bay Power Plant. So the Noasis Bay Power Plant is about 1,700 feet away from our discharge. That's at a point even farther than what just what Michelle just mentioned at that point 38 ppt. The power plant moves about 400 million gallons a day into into Noasis Bay. Um, so not only that dilution into Noasis Bay means you're going to be at ambient. But the desal plant is actually removing zinc and copper, as well as organics and other things that are going to be going to the landfill. So the water that is going through the Nueces Bay power plant to Nueces Bay will actually be cleaner than what is in the inner harbor. Thank you. Next, please. My name is Albert Sakuchi. You can adjust that microphone if you don't mind. Thank you. My name is Albert Sakuchi. My question is the same individual. If that was the case, why do we have such a bad brown tide events? And there's actually what they call a death triangle in the Bay of Corpus Christi. If there is so much water coming in and so much water going out, why do we have that effect there? And why are you trying to put more salinity into the water to make that worse? Okay, thank you. That may not be entirely pertinent to the discharge application that we're talking about tonight. Okay, hold on, right. hold on. Let them respond. Go ahead. I will say that the TCEQ has rules for discharges. The city and the application go above and beyond those. Now, there are dynamics outside of the Inner Harbor that do not relate to this application, but I will say one thing in response to what we hear pretty often, that this is more or extra salt. And there is no salt going back into the Inner Harbor that did not come from the Inner Harbor. And so I'll ask TCEQ staff, did, did we look at the impact that the uh, discharge would have on the bay, uh, especially with respect to the amount of, uh, I guess, the, the saline nature of the discharge and how that would affect the bay. So that's something that we looked at. And if so, what did we determine? Um, so seawater has a general salinity of about 35 um, ppt. So, like, this is talking about very close to the outfall is like when I was saying before, how when you decrease a little bit, it's going to have just a um, 460 feet from the outfall, it would already decrease to 1.2 ppt over ambient. So that's 380 feet from the outfall. The farther you go from that, it decreases even more. So the increase in salinity in the Nueces or Corpus Christi, Christi Bay is very minimal. Thank you. Thank I would you. have to say y'all are really informed because thank you. We need, true. we need to move on. Thank you. Yes, sir. First of all, that's average seawater is 
as far as the salinity, Corpus Christi Bay, I think, is reported as 39%, and Laguna Madre at 41%. And that's and a highly saline environment. And that's something that, you might want to include in your comments when we get to the formal comments session. Well, my, my question is, is, how could you possibly approve the permit when there's so much left unanswered and blank in the permit? How could it possibly be legitimate? If you read that permit, there are so many things that are unanswered. Okay. So his question goes to the completeness of the application. And in the studies done to complete the application. Okay. Completely empty blanks all the way through it. I all right. Thank, thank you. Uh, is that something that staff can address regarding the completeness of the application and whether additional studies were required? The other requirements in the back of the permit require additional studies. This is a new application. And therefore, there's always additional information that is needed and constantly looked at at the life of any application. All of our applications only have a five-year life until they have to be renewed. And so we, again, require additional analysis at each one of those renewal processes. Okay. So there's both a salinity study and a velocity study that's required on the other requirements in the back of the permit. No, I was talking about the lack of information concerning where the intake and the outtake were, the stormwater, the average okay. rainfall events, the runoffs, all of these things, just to get a start on that, I think it's section four, is, is I think all of the, uh, there's so many blanks so in the permit. Thank you for that. I, I think, know how again, during, the, during your comments, you'll, you'll want to raise those issues. Thank you. Next, please. My question is for the TCQ, and I want to know whether this draft permit has been submitted to the EPA and why or why not. Based on the rules at the time this application was submitted in 2020, it was not required to be submitted to the EPA for review. Thank you. And Brett, so are you saying it's not a major facility? All new applications are treated as minor facilities until they go through the worksheet that determines them a major or minor. And then at the end of the application process, if it then becomes a major, and that is discussed with EPA. EPA is the only one that can say it's a major facility. Okay, thank so, you, Mary. And again, if, if you have information that you want to provide during the comment period, that, that's the time to do so. Yes, please. I have a question for the city. I'm wondering with these 20 sites you looked at, why Inner Harbor as opposed to the Barney Davis site, which is only five miles from the Gulf, it would be a seven mile pipeline to get two miles out into the Gulf, where we could have higher quality water, less fouling, less scaling, because it's not this really productive inner harbor water. And the outfall would be out in the Gulf of Mexico, where the loop currents can dilute it. Why the inner harbor? All right, thank you. So choice of location. The Barney Davis location is an interesting one, um, and it's one that was looked at. Although I would argue, with my understanding of, of the coastal bend, that the Laguna Madre and Oso Bay are more sensitive ecosystems than where we have sited in the Inner Harbor. All right, thank you. Go ahead. The Gulf of Mexico pipelines for both intake and discharge go back to that balance that we had to strike on, on the three priorities that we were given. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. This is for TCQ. How many seawater desalination plants have you permitted before, especially in an enclosed bay system? All right, thank you. You guys have that information, how many? Okay, go ahead. So there are two other permitted desal facilities in the Corpus Christi Bay area. One is Corpus Christi Polymers. Okay, one that's thank actually you. in operation. All right, thank you, thank you, go ahead. Well, we don't have any that are currently discharging and in operation. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. We've got, we got folks lined up. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. You can adjust that microphone. There you go, thank you. This is for the city of Corpus Christi. You are already under a consent decree with the EPA for uh, charging uh, gunk into our bay. And now you're requesting a um, application for TDCQ to uh, dump more gunk in the bay. 
So how do you rectify that? All right, thank you. Right, so I will uh, basically just say that that is true. We are under a consent decree, um, and that is something that we are working to comply with. It, it's something that uh, came about a couple of years ago, and so the city has allocated uh, resources to ensure that we comply with that EPA consent decree. Right, thank you. Yes, please. Um, my question is for the city, and uh, my name is Tara Anders. I'm wondering how the city has been able to continue to sell off water rights to major polluters and heavy industry um, and put our city water at risk um, as far as the main source for the citizenry that is stuck with the bill. Or right. So, I can make earlier in tonight's meeting is to discuss the discharge part of the before TCQ. You have a question about the discharge permit itself. My question then would be, how are you going to justify the discharge that results from everything that you're doing for major industry at the risk of the water source for the city of Corpus Christi and the surrounding area? All right, thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate that question. So um, what I would say is, is this is a this is a new raw water supply. This is for the benefit of everybody in the city. It's not just for the benefit of one particular order, order, and it, it benefits everybody in the city. This is a new raw water supply, and everybody will pay for it. And everybody Thank you. will pay for it. Thank you. Next, please. Howdy, my name is James Perkins. Uh, my question about the permit is related more to the construction of it. Uh, how do you, why is the permit approving it, the desal plant if the discharge pipe is so close to the intake pipe? Would that not cause uh, sucking up the very brine you're putting back out? Would that not cause that? Okay. So a question about the design. So according to the modeling and uh, velocity data in the channel, no, that's not a concern. All right. And so, so if you have information that you think contradicts that, I would encourage you to include that as your, your comments later on. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, this is to TCEQ. The lady who asked earlier about the standards for salinity, I don't think she was asking how it was, how you calculated it. She was asking, what are the dangerous levels of salinity? What what what? When is salinity not a good thing? Do you have some standards related to salinity? And if so, what are they? And how close are these to good, bad, whatever? Are there standards? Okay, thank you. So those, um, when I was talking about the calculations and what, sorry, there was studies that we looked at, including um, studies from Texas Parks, Texas Wildlife, and um, also more recent studies by Dr. Nielsen, who specifically was looking at red drum larvae, which is a more sensitive group. And those that the uh, collection of those studies indicated that under two PPT is protective of those. So this is um, much lower than that. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll also. Okay, go ahead, Jim. Uh, to address your question more. Uh, directly, there is actually not a, a specific uh, standard for salinity. So, so what was because salinity is so variable. Um, so, what was done for these analyses is, is looking at the the change of salinity from ambient conditions, and, and that was assessed to to look at potential impacts on aquatic life. Thank you, Jim. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is John Purcell. Uh, my question is for the city. Uh, why are we here to begin with? The basic premise of all this is for the public water supply. It's a proven fact that there's plenty of water in our lakes, even, even as they're decreasing and the levels are going down. There's plenty of water for the public water supply. So what is the basic reason we are here to begin with? This whole process to begin with is entirely for industry. And why won't the city just be honest with the Thank public you. for a change? Thank you, thank you. So again, uh, tonight's meeting is to discuss the application that's pending before TCEQ. Uh, the the legally, in terms of legally relevant, uh, water use is not a part of TCEQ's review. Uh, I guess I'll just say, does the city have anything that they want to say to address that? Okay. 
Yeah, water. I, I totally understand. Um, so what, what I would say is, is this water is going to be integrated into the water distribution system. It is going to go into the water distribution system, and it will benefit every customer class in the city of Corpus Christi. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next, please. Jacqueline Sanchez, she's going to be taking the pitch. Uh, first line is, what is it? Propriety materials. The second one is. If you're a member, you're a member. Order, 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 order. Please do not disrupt the meeting. If you continue to be disruptive, you'll be asked to leave. Security, would the police ask security come down? Thank you. We'll pause. Could please have security come on down? Is there security in the room? Thank you. Hold on. We'll pause. At, at the beginning of the meeting, I stated if you're going to be disruptive, you may be asked to leave. All right. Did, did you have a question? Thank you. Well, are we gonna feed the fish? What are we gonna feed the fish? Okay, so we, we can address that. Um, how would this? The question I believe is how this how this affect aquatic life? How would the discharge into the bay affect aquatic life? I appreciate the question, and this may also uh, provide a little clarity on a question that was asked a little bit earlier. Um, the way that the, the limits for salinity were established, um, the basis for all of that was a very thorough review of salinity tolerances of the species that live in the coastal bend. Um, we've got a great team of coastal ecologists, marine biologists, and others who looked at a lot of information. And then a very recent conversation I had with some of the folks over at UTMSI, they talked about how our ecosystem and species here are very unique. Because if you talk to marine biologists in another part of the country, other parts of the country, they can't believe that you find species here in salinity ranges that you do. And so what we found on. was that in the salinity ranges for the local species, not just the indicator organisms that are used for, for testing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you for the question. That was very brave of you to come up. Thank you. Um, and so the basis for all of the salinity limits, the percent effluent targets that you see in the draft permit, all of that is founded on the idea of making sure that we are protective of the local organisms. And that was established by looking at what, what ranges um, of salinity can they tolerate, and not just for certain life stages, but for every life stage of those species. And so I would encourage you to go to the city's website, desal.cctexas.com. There's a critical dilutions paper that talks through that approach and how how those salinity targets were established. So, you know, the fish, and we're talking local species, you can see their salinity tolerances there. We really want to be protective of, of those species for her generation. All right. Thank you. Yes, please. Um, the... Even though they say it's clean, there's been you know, water because up in the air comes down, even though TCEQ does not factor that into their permits, um, you know, and it all lands in our water. So how can we as a public trust CCW to be able to adequately clean our water when you have all of these heavy toxins and chemicals um, and you're going to put that back in our water supply? People don't trust CC water right now. All right. Thank so. you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll cover maybe the, the intake part here, and then I'll hand it to Drew to talk about uh, the quality of water in Corpus Christi, uh, which I think is actually pretty exemplary. The, the, intake, the, intake, the intake depth is actually very strategic, and the water right has already been authorized for the diversion, but the hydrocarbons that you're talking about are typically low density, um, so the intake depths will mean that, that those will not come into the intake. However, at the end of the plant, the city will be responsible for distributing very high quality water that meets all primary and secondary drinking water standards. 
There will also be a lot of monitoring on the intake so that if there is a spill, if there is an incident in the, in the inner harbor, the plant will not process that. So that All right, guys, so y'all can kind of see what is going on here. There's a lot of questions that are being asked and they're not being answered. They are truly beating around the bush on this whole deal. I mean, if I stumped them with a simple question of brown tide in our water, I didn't even ask them about red tide yet. We do have that here as well. It hasn't happened in a few years, but once you change the dynamic and we get a heavy downpour, that red tide's gonna come right back and it's gonna close down whatever they can do. So what is gonna happen to this facility for months on end when we have red tide and they cannot use any water because of all the toxins that are currently in it. So I'm gonna have that two minute uh, discussion when they allow us to get back up there and you know I'm gonna be pointing things out, but I do appreciate everybody being on the channel and commenting on what's going on. Um, yes, and definitely, you know, those little thoughts that you're putting in there, I'm sitting here reading, I'm off channel, I'm not real close to what's going on. But I guarantee that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it live here. I'm amazed this phone has not gone off because I'm actually, between my phones, I'm, I'm flipping back and forth because they keep getting kicked off the, the feed for some reason. Like I'm losing internet service when all of this is going through. So it is definitely something to, to, to look into. But I am not back down. I mean, and I was, and to be honest, my question was a simple one. I hadn't even gotten into the technical ones of what's going to happen. Who are we going to blame when this fails? They're, already, they, they're trying to say that all these other ones are successful. They're not successful because if they were, why are they being shut down every so often or periodically, you know, to, to do whatever they got to do for extended periods of time? So, valid spectral models, salinic changes in the bay, the delta between the intake and the output doesn't matter. There has to be a maximum. Yeah, no. Yeah, no doubt. And there's there's a lot of strong points, but that's also where this is coming into play of the public comment. And that's why they're only given two minutes because there's a ton of people that have signed up for it. You know, everybody that walked in with the blue shirts and stuff like that, plus everybody that's already here for the public comment are, are gonna be on it. So uh, yeah, this is gonna be real interesting because now, the last meeting, they dominated by having a lot of lawyers and suits and everything saying they're all for it. But now it's everybody else has caught wind of what's going on. And that's why there's a lot more people that are here against it and voicing their opinion. So this is it's finally gaining momentum, guys. It, this is real positive for us. But again, too, this is not the time for us to get lax or complacent on the deal. We got to keep sharing it. We got to keep getting more people involved. So those of y'all that know the email, teamhardlife1 at gmail.com is where y'all can share y'all's information of what's going on uh, in your area with those desalination plants. Because again, too, this is a experimental desal project. And then they're hiring a company that has never built a desalination project to, to build it for us. Like, I'm sorry, that that is, it's crazy so but uh again guys there's a lot of a lot of people here that are speaking up and finally getting a voice to be heard and stuff like that so i'm looking forward to it big time yes oh you should have i wish i could have been up here you know watching the camera because when i asked my question they were like <laughs> yeah i mean they're 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 talking the math they're talking the money at the end of the day it's about the money and you, you hear multiple times talking, well, because of the money and because of the money. There's other ways to create, to get water into our area and they've already been proven. It's already been done with without popping, uh, 
pollution going back into the environment. Right here, our bays, if you've grown up and been, lived here your, your whole life, you'll know that we do not have the amount of water influx that they need to de to get the, the salinity levels back to where it's not going to hurt the environment or anything like that, whereas it's doing right now. I mean, shoot, we don't even have a desal plant here, and we're having all these issues with our base system, with that death triangle, with, you know, red tide, and we don't even have that extra effect in there. At that end, what kind of multiplication factor is it going to do to our basis? And they keep saying, well, it's so far away, it's so far away. Water's got to come right, everyone, somewhere. Gonna it's going to drift again. back out to it. Please and take your seats. Wrap up your I'm, conversations. I'm if you'd like to keep talking, please you, step outside you, uh, into the foyer. Uh, before you get started with the normal conversation, the edges I'm going to invite Steve Tejano to come forward and make it another I'm announcement up. regarding his services. Once again, for the Spanish speakers, una vez más, si hay alguien aquí que necesita el servicio de interpretación, al español, por favor, pasen a la esquina de allá atrás por un radio receptor. Gracias. All right, once again, for the record, this is a public meeting on an application by the city of Corpus Christi. It is for proposed water quality permit uh, number WQ00052890000. This is the formal comment session. This is the formal comment session for tonight's public meeting. This will be your opportunity to provide comments for the record that you want TCQ staff to consider and ultimately the TCQ commissioners to consider before making any final decisions on the application. During this part of the meeting, you will not receive a response to your comments in the moment. Rather, the comments that you provide tonight get uh, compiled with all the written comments that have been submitted on this application. They get responded to in one written document called uh, the Executive Director's Response to Public Comment. Uh, I'm going to call you up in groups so that you can be prepared. I've got 113 folks who have signed up to provide comments. I'm going to call you in order and once you registered. Uh, because of the number of folks that have signed up, you're going to have two minutes to provide your comments. Uh, with one minute left, you'll hear me say one minute. And then when your time is up, you'll hear me say time. When I say time, you'll need to step away from the microphone and allow someone else to come up and start their comments. If two minutes is not enough time for you, uh, you're welcome to step out to the registration table and you can supplement your comments in writing. Uh, when you hear me call your name, uh, step up to the microphone, state your name for the record. If I mispronounce your name, I apologize in advance. State your name for the record, even though you hear me say your name, and then start your comments. And so our first group uh, will start with Darcy Schroeder. We'll be followed by Tanya Bergstrom, Jim Klein, and then Robert Landry. So Darcy Schroeder. When I, when I call your group, if you wouldn't mind making your way to the microphone, that way we can move things along a little more quickly. Darcy. Good evening. My name is Darcy Schroeder. Water is vital for the overall economic health of our entire community. Seawater desalinization has been implemented in cities around the world, and it's time for Texas to move forward with a water supply source other than groundwater. I've been fortunate and have been part of many of the city's meetings regarding its proposed seawater desalt facility and its permitting process over the past 10 plus years. This city-led project has been vetted and re-vetted. The city has posted information on its website and held a variety of public meetings. It, has, it and its outside engineers have done extensive in-channel water sampling as well as flow and velocity assessments. I believe the permit that was submitted demonstrates this project can be accomplished while not harming our environment nor marine ecosystems. I encourage the TCQ to issue the final discharge permit so that construction can begin on a sustainable and drought-proof water source for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Tanya Bergstrom. 
Hi, my name is Tanya Bergstrom. Uh, so first of all, uh, TECQ Water District Number Three, City of Robstown, and the City of Corpus Christi have actively and productively been breaking the law by not submitting the open records acts that we have been requesting from you guys. So the diesel will not solve the water insecurity that we have. We're going to build this one billion dollar infrastructure partially covered by federal grants, but it won't cover it completely. So who is paying for the rest? With the industries coming, the diesel will only cover the industry to correct today's problem. But if we continue to accept the big industries, we'll be in the same boat with the diesel plant that can't produce enough water. The refineries are using 90% of the water. Avena is coming, asking and flip-flopping. They don't even know how much water, but we're estimating with chemists and engineers that they're going to need 10 million gallons of water. Tesla came in asking for 1 million. All of a sudden, they need 8 million gallons of water. Pamiko, we're estimating that they need 10 million gallons of water. And what... what? what One minute. What? <laughs> and what? We just... 72 hour notice what if we can't produce this water they can sue us not only that the diesel plant costs so, it's so much to maintain and it, it's gonna we're gonna have to pay for the cost to fix this machine and not only that we're selling our water one person this is a temporary solution we're gonna run out of water in five years and once these big industries rape us of our resources they're gonna hide behind their lawyers if you guys don't see that Thank you. Jim Klein. Environmental organization representing people living in about 18 counties centered around Corpus Christi. The Coastal Bend Sierra Club group opposes, and I oppose, issuance of this permit, WQ0005289000. A full-blown environmental impact study is needed to determine the consequences of this project, and that has not been done so far. Lacking that, the responsible thing is to reject this permit. The applicant has not considered the environmental impact of the five desal plants proposed uh, under consideration by the TCEQ. One has already been permitted, four are under consideration by the TCEQ. This will increase salinity in Corpus Christi Bay, threatening the flora and fauna in that bay. Coastal Bend Sierra Club group call, call, calls on the TCEQ to conduct a study of the cumulative effects of water emissions, but also air emissions in this increasingly industrialized area. We've been making that call for 15 years. I will make it again tonight. One minute. No senator, sorry, no seawater desal plant has discharged its brine into a closed bay system such as Corpus Christi Bay. It is, a, it is reckless and irresponsible. Texas Parks and Wildlife expresses concerns about increased salinity of the zinc and copper permit. The Coastal Bend Sierra Club group also calls on TCEQ to grant Hillcrest residents and their association standing in a contested case hearing to oppose this application in the courts. <laughs> Coastal Bend Sierra Club group opposes issuance of this permit. Thank you. Thank you. In his comments, Jim made reference to requesting a contested hearing. I just want to take a moment to let everyone know that all requests for a contested hearing have to be made in writing. I know that Jim knows that. It's not enough to state it at the microphone. If, if you wish to request a hearing, you'll need to do so in writing. Up next is Robert Landig. Yes, thank you. Bob Landig. Um, first, thank you both groups of people for being here. I can't imagine what this is like. Um, I'm an engineer, been for 16 years. Um, I was going to speak to some of the technical aspects um, of things, but I think it's very, very clear because I can read. Um, I am absolutely 100% for the desalinization plant. We completely need it as a community. Um, I work, live, and I participate in this community, and I love it. I, I'm a scout leader. I love camping. I love the environment. This, this false narrative that uh, this mythical industry group is the only group that benefits from it is disgusting to me. The tens of thousands of people who work in these industries, these are the best paying, most sought after, best jobs that we have. It is the lifeblood of this economy and what we need to keep going. Order, Maybe. order, go ahead. The very, very small minority of people that are allowed about this 
the hundred people in here, the vast majority of people that I know support this. I want you guys to know that this community is for this and we need it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Order. Order. Let's have order in the room, please. Uh, again, as a reminder, we continue to be disruptive. We'll be asked to leave the meeting. Our next group, we'll start with Wesley Turberry, Austin Machow, John Hale, and Eric Barnett. Wesley Turberry. I'm not there. No, you're not. We're, we're taking order people in the order in which they signed up. Okay, okay thank you. Wesley Turberry. Hello, my name is Wesley Turbury. As someone who has closely followed the city of Corpus Christi's efforts to secure new and reliable water resources, I'm convinced the desalination plan is a critical investment for our future. The approval of the discharge permit brings us one step closer to a drought resistant water supply that will serve not just our current population, but also support the growth and prosperity of the coastal Bend region. Thank you. Up next is Austin Machow. Oh, Austin Machow. As a longtime resident of Corpus Christi, I've witnessed the challenges our community faces with water scarcity. I stand in support of the City of Corpus Christi Seawater Desalination Plant and Associate Discharge Permit. This project is a necessary step towards ensuring a sustainable and secure water future for our region. I believe the extensive research and proven technologies demonstrate a responsible approach to our collective and need for a reliable water supply for the region. By moving forward with desalination, we are taking a proactive approach to overcome any drought conditions that threaten our way of life in South Texas. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Up next is John Hale. John Hale, I'm here today to express my support for the TCQ. Authorize the permit for the South facility. Beyond the obvious advantages the project has, enhancing our community's growth, ensuring a positive future for generations to come, thousands of the Coastal Bend residents receiving competitive wages because they are able to work locally, and so many more that I could add. What drives me here today is my passion for emergency response and preparedness. As an emergency responder in our community, I can tell you that bountiful water supply is essential to safe operations, response to emergencies. Whether it's responding to house fires, vehicle accidents, hazardous material spills, or rail incidents, we owe it to local and state agencies who respond to these emergencies. We owe them the ability to respond without concerns of water inventory. We owe it to them to be in a position to use all resources available without having to manage limitations of those resources resources. The TCQ has a difficult decision, and many of us here tonight appreciate your dedication. We appreciate your commitment to ensure a diligent review consideration of this permit, and we trust you will make the right decision for a drop-proof solution that ensures the growth of Corpus Christi area and for generations to come. One final thought. One minute. As a leader of my son's scouting organization, I have no desire to damage our local resources. The studies that, I show, that I've shown Review the data in current these south plants indicate we will not experience an impact to the environment, waterways, or bays. And therefore, I'm here today to express my support for the effort in building the these south facility. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Eric Burnett. Eric Burnett, uh, I reside in Portland, Texas. I've served on the Oasis River Authority Board of Directors since October of 2014. Governor Abbott appointed me as president of the board March of 2024. I'm here this evening to represent the authority. The Oasis River Authority serves as the sponsor for the sponsor of the Texas Water Development Board's Region N Planning Group, which is responsible for water supply planning for 11 South Texas counties, which includes the Coastal Bend area. The most current plan adopted by the Development Board, the 2022 Water for Texas State Water Plan, projects a water supply shortage of 28.4 million gallons per day by 2030, growing to 44.2 million gallons per day shortage by 2070 for the Coastal Bend region. These projections include all water demands with the exception of any additional industrial water needs. The state of Texas has tasked with Nueces River Authority with the mission that obligates us to provide vision and leadership for water and other resource issues within 17 and a half thousand square mile in the Oasis Basin. As we review the water demands for the coastal bend area and much larger in the Oasis Basin, we find deficits in the future to be excess of 71 million gallons. The Oasis River Authority supports the development of seawater desalinization 
as a water supply strategy due to its abundance and sustainable qualities to meet all future water needs. And thank you. Order. Order. Our next group will start with Aaron Uri, and then Dr. Jacqueline Curry, Haley Law, and then Kelly Coates. Aaron Uri. Hi, I'm, I'm Aaron J. Uri, and uh, I wrote this down because I tend to ramble. I'm not against the industry. I retired from the automotive industry. I am against the building of industry where it puts people and the environment in jeopardy, especially when we, the taxpayers, not the industry, have to pay for it. And now I know you've, the city said they're going to, but from what I've read and heard, we are going to pick up the tab. I simply do not believe salt can be discharged in our water in a safe manner. I understand what you said, but our, I just heard from a young lady out there, it takes 50 months for our water to rotate. Okay, this is for the city. Why do we have to compromise? Why not just say our water for industry? And we do not need our citizens to pay for more industry use so they can buy bigger and better mansions. The only thing in a fragile environment like ours is water for fish and One people, minute. but not for big business. Thank you. Up next is Dr. Jacqueline Curry. Hello, I'm Dr. Jacqueline Curry. I am in support of granting the Inner Harbor Seawater Desalination Discharge Permit to the City of Corpus Christi with the perspective that this is an investment for our community rather than for industry. I live and work in this community. My family relies on industry for our livelihood, as do my hundreds of coworkers working locally. Our area has a growing economy, which encourages young families to remain in the region, further strengthening our local businesses for both current and future generations. Roadblocking water availability efforts will not hurt corporations. They will find other investment opportunities, but this region will struggle to find funds required to sustain, let alone improve, roads and infrastructure. Over the course of the past few years, the city has been able to improve infrastructure, expanding road repairs, building park hold on, improvements, hold on, and hold on, more. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, folks. Please stop interrupting when somebody is giving their comments. Everyone who has, everybody who wants to, have the opportunity to share their own opinion about this application. These improvements have been made possible in part by the same industries that employ many of the city's residents. One minute. Bringing new technology with potential environmental impacts to the region can be intimidating. But if we continue to stall developmental progress and drain our environmental resources, we will end up backing ourselves into a corner, and our community is the one who will pay the price. The city has relied on the expertise of numerous agencies and organizations to model the desalination could look like for the coastal bend, including extensive in-channel water sampling and velocity assessments over various seasons and in different conditions. We have the intellectual capital in the region to do desal right, and continue to work to solve resource challenges while protecting the natural environment, which is an important element of quality of life and economic prosperity for the region. The region needs sustainable drought resistant and diversified water sources to ensure prosperity for residents and industry alike. Desalination can fulfill Thank this you. need. Thank you. Up next is Haley Law. Hi, oh, my name is Haley Law. Um, thank you guys so much for being here today. Really appreciate you guys' answers to the questions. Uh, I've lived in the coastal bend for a little over five years, um, and seawater desalination is not a new concept. This has been done in communities around the world, and I support having seawater desalination facility built in Corpus Christi to help meet the growing needs of our community. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Up next is Kelly Coates. Good evening. My name is Kelly Coates. I am a lifelong resident of Coastal Bend. 
and I'm a graduate of Texas A&M Kingsville with a chemical engineering degree. Water is critical for all of us, and we need a drought-proof water supply to support the growth in our area. Unfortunately, our two main reservoirs have seen very little rainfall over the past few years and are at low levels. I encourage the TCEQ to issue this permit so that our area can move forward with a new water supply to support our drought-prone region. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Our next group, we'll start with Justin McKenzie, who will be followed by Francisco Falcon, Patty Jones, and then Stacey Barna. Justin McKenzie. Hi, I'm Justin McKenzie. I wrote this down because I'm not the very best speaker, uh, but I live in Corpus. I'm a husband, dad, everybody in here is my neighbor. I am for issuing the desalination permit to the Corp city of Corpus Christi. Uh, the reason I'm for that, to me, is pretty simple. I look at what's happening in the southwestern United States. You look at Arizona, they're looking to pipe water from Mexico because they're so desperate for water. You look at Utah, they're looking to pipe water from the Pacific Ocean. And you've got lots of communities that there's water scarcity and they're trucking water in because that's what you do when you have a family and there's no water. So um, I guess what I see in the news clips from those is a lot of tension and neighbors pointing fingers at other neighbors, farmers, because the resource is that important. One minute. See, water is a system, um, but I know that there's lots of experts in here. So I guess we have the technology to do better than pray for rain rainfall. We should be after all the options to pursue drought-proof solutions. That's why I'm for desal. Um, in my mind, the question is, do we have the right reviews to safely do this? When I looked at the permit, there's modeling. We had the TCQ take us through what the triggers are. And part of the permit is also continuous monitoring so we don't miss anything. To me, it's time to move forward. I'm for issuing this permit. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Francisco Falcon. Thank you all for having me. Thank you all for having this event. It's been a pleasure to hear the variety of perspectives this evening and to hear some more. Change is scary. I know it is for me at least. The thought of running out of water one day is even scarier for me. I realize that years have been invested in this design. It's not the first desalination plant in the world. As a mechanical engineer, I believe that the team of engineers, the city and the TCEQ have worked hard on this and given it due diligence. I am choosing to trust the experts and I encourage the TCEQ to issue the permit. Thank you. Up next is Patty Jones. Uh, my name is Patty Jones. I'm here today because I strongly oppose the planned Hillcrest Inner Harbor desalination plant. The plant would discharge tens of millions of gallons of salty brine per day back into Corpus Christi Bay. That would be an environmental disaster devastating to fishing, birding, recreation, and tourism. The Hillcrest residents have said they don't want this plant as it would threaten the health, safety, and well-being of their community. Public hearings have not been held in the Hillcrest neighborhood. There is a pending Title VI complaint against the city from uh, this neighborhood for environmental racism. The the permitting of this plant should be placed on hold until the Title VI complaint is resolved. Desalination is One a cost costly water option. It would cost more than recycled water and many times more than reservoir water. The desal plant would be for the benefit of heavy industry, yet residents would be expected to pay for it in higher taxes 
and higher water bills. Final costs of the desal plant could run into the millions of dollars. The money instead could be better spent on repairing the city's aging water infrastructure. Drought and water scarcity are the norm here in South Texas. It's every citizen's duty to conserve water. However, industry is held to a much lower standard with regard to water conservation. For decades, residents have been paying at a, high, a significantly higher rate for water than industry. Industry should be paying for water That's at fine. the same Thank you. rate as industry. Up next is Stacy Barney. Good evening, my name is Stacy Barna. I'm here tonight to speak in favor of the Inner Harbor Desalination Discharge Permit. Corpus Christi is the eighth largest city in the state and currently has one drinking water plant to supply all of the water supply needs of the city and surrounding areas. It is the largest city in the state that is dependent on one water plant. Having a second water plant is important to make the water system more resilient and the use of seawater, a limitless drought-proof resource is smart especially as other surface water sources dwindle. Currently, the city is under stage two drought restrictions in the springtime when resources are normally their highest. This should be a wake-up call that additional source of water is critically needed for the residents and businesses in the area to survive and beyond that to thrive. Large infrastructure projects do not happen quickly. This project is no exception and has been in development stages for over 10 years. Locations were studied, tested, modeled prior to submitting a permit One application. The, permit, the project is proceeding this year with an anticipated completion date in 2027, still three years from now. I feel strongly that we're in a water crisis at this point and there is no time to waste. Studying, second-guessing locations and plan sizes and discussing the what-ifs before proceeding. Environmental mitigation is important and the permit is just one step. It will be imperative for the city to incorporate eco-friendly practices and minimize harm to marine ecosystems through the piloting and design stages of the project to ensure the best outcome for the bay and all those who enjoy it. I have confidence the city wants to be a good neighbor and environmental steward. The cost of building a 30 MGD desalination plant is not inexpensive, but it is the lowest cost it will ever be right now. If the city continues to wait, materials and construction costs will only continue to escalate in the future. The city has shown due diligence by applying this for state and federal funding programs to find the least expensive path forward to build the plant at the lowest cost to all That's fine. Thank you. City. Thank you. Uh, our next group will start with Rachel Caballero, will be followed by Blanca Parkinson, John Weber, and then Alita Castillo. The irony here is our tax dollars pay all of you. Again, Freeze and Nickel has never built a desalination plant ever. They have no experience. Drew Molly has only had this job for three months, and he only got the job because the other guy got fired because his integrity was stronger than his paycheck. I'd like to remind everybody in this room that we are the minority user at 16%. We do not need this water. Industry does. There are paid, TCEQ needs to know that there are paid representatives here from the PAC Texas Desal Matters. So these people coming here speaking in favor have been paid, just FYI. There has never been a plant like this built ever in the world. One minute. This is not a political party issue. This is a moral and community issue. We are demanding an environmental impact study. We are demanding a community vote. This is not sustainable. You are lying to the public. It is not the community's responsibility to resolve global issues. If you want to see this go away, folks, these are the people to not vote for in November. Paulette Wajardo. Michael Hunter, Mike Putzman, Roland Barretta, Dan Suckley, Everett Roy, Barbara Canales, Sean Strawbridge, David Loeb, Larry Elizondo. Do not vote for those people in November. Thank you. 
Blanca Parkinson. Good evening. Thank you for being here, TCQ. We know that you all don't deny permits, and we know that you all work for a corrupt agency. So I, I know you're doing your job, so I'm not going to address you all. I'd like to address the misinformation of some of these pro desal activists and our friends up here. Okay, we know you changed. To all the people that are so proud of this application, what part of it changed two months ago do you not understand? They didn't even bother to tell you. We know you're designing a plant like no other plant in the entire world because nobody's stupid enough to put the intake 900 feet from the discharge. We know there is no environmental impact statement. We know there are five proposed plants. We know these plans are for a hydrogen build out and we know that that hydrogen build out will not provide tens of thousands of jobs. It will provide 900 and nine, less than a thousand permanent jobs. Our kids deserve better than this. We know, we know that the plants in California and Florida are not working properly. They're running intermittently, as are the ones in the Arabian Gulf. We know this doesn't mean green soccer fields and, and restored lake levels. We know the projected water demand is for industrial growth, not municipal. And we know that CCQ blessed and baptized the applications knowing that. We know you lied. And we know industry is already taking 80% of our water. We know that you did a bait and switch with the cost estimate and you're giving us cost estimates for a 10 MGD plant and now you're going to a 30 MGD plant. What I need to know, Peter Sinoni, is what is so funny that you have to sit over there all night smirking and when are you going to resign? Up next is John Weber. Order. John Weber. Order. John Weber. We know the Nueces Bay power plant uses water from the Inner Harbor for cooling. It intakes around 340 million gallons a day. This cooling water is put back into the, isn't put back into the Inner Harbor, but is discharged into Nueces Bay. The volume is enough to replace all the water in Nueces Bay every 35 days. The outfall for the Inner Harbor plant will be 32 feet below sea level. The intake for the Nueces Bay power plant is 30 feet below sea level. The Inner Harbor plant's outfall is located 1,500 feet from the Nueces Bay power plant intake. Many locals and tourists recreate in Nueces Bay. It is currently an excellent place to catch fish. Due to the location of the Inner Harbor desalination plant outfall in relation to the Nueces Bay power plant intake, one would presume much of the hypersaline outfall will reach the intake of the Nueces Bay power plant. The power plant intake will act as a powerful vacuum to suck up this mixture, and then it will be used to cool the power plant and then be dumped into Nueces Bay. This is approximately 340 million gallons a day of water mixed with desalination discharge will have a large impact on New Oasis Bay. TCEQ needs to consider the recreational impacts to the community. Without a doubt, the Hillcrest residents should be allowed standing in a contested case hearing. People that fish, own bait shops, and fishing guides should also be allowed standing in a contested case hearing. A full environmental impact statement needs to be performed. In the meantime, I am opposed to this permit being granted. Thank you. Elida Castillo. Good evening. My name is Elida Castillo. I am here to stand in opposition to the Inner Harbor, aka Hillcrest desalination site. Unlike so many who have spoken in favor of desalination, my roots are here. I did not move here for an industry job. My family is here. I have generations of family who are buried here, who lived here. If y'all had been here, you would have seen how plentiful our bays were with fish, with oysters, with sea life. People come from all over to vacation to recreate here. And now we are always fighting for our survival. I refuse to live in a sacrifice zone. 
Our communities are beautiful. Everybody who visits here says that our community is beautiful and it is worth fighting for. And that is what we are doing. We are standing up for our community because y'all have just suspected us time and time again. TCEQ, you have a mission. You are supposed to protect One Texas. Minute. You are failing at your job. Why is it that we have had to be at these hearings every month, it seems like? We are tired, but we are not going to stop fighting because these are our communities. We have young children who we want to grow up here. We don't want to move away. We shouldn't have to move away. And I am so tired of people to say, saying, if you don't like it, move away. That is not just. This is our community. This is our home. TCEQ, I hope that you are making this project abide by the Harbor Island by having them abide by the ZET zones, the zone of zone affluence, uh, zones of affluent dissolution at 2%. And I also support Hillcrest in their contested case hearing, and we'll write that down. And um, let's see. All right, well, I'll say it from my niece. No D South. Thank you. Our next group will start with Cindy Valdez, who will be followed by Mark Munster, Dorothy Pena, and then Daniel Pena. Cindy Valdez. Hello. Thank you for this opportunity to speak tonight. Appreciate it. Um, enough. TCEQ has already approved hundreds and hundreds of water waste permits and water rights permits right here in Corpus Christi Bay. Think about the cumulative effects. Now you're going to start drawing millions of gallons of water. Enough. We already have Cancer Alley over here. And your own Air Now Air Monitor public reports that people can prescribe to are showing this entire week that the particulate matter is at of 2.5 is dangerous, moderately dangerous. It actually says, and I'll read One minute. If you are unusually sensitive to particulate pollution, consider reducing your activity level or shorten the amount of time that you are active outdoors. Enough. We know that you don't deny permits. You've been in the history of existence for, what, over 20 years, and you deny two in the state of Texas. You are in the business of granting permits. That's what you do. We are open for business, is what the governor says. Enough. We need to do better. We need to be better. We need to, our children are counting on us and we are failing them miserably. Enough, do better. Thank you, Mark Munster. Hello, my name is Mark Munster. Um, our bay, the heart of our community is at risk. The proposed desalination plant intends to discharge brine back into our waters, and we haven't even had a thorough environmental impact statement yet. This isn't just about today, it's about what we're leading to the next 20, 30, 40 years in the future. We're being told we need this plant because of water shortages, but look at the facts, look at who's using our water. We're currently in stage two, just yesterday an article came out that we're probably gonna go in stage into stage three this summer. Everyone needs to look at what those stage three restrictions are, even more restrictions on watering. You can't even water your car. And industry continues to get exemptions and they, there's even wording in that they can opt out of exemptions. Everyone needs to go read the stage three restrictions. And whoever uses the gallons of water is it's incredibly relevant to why we're here today. That's what the permit's for. Over 40 million gallons a day is used by all the industry combined. The average residential home is like two to 300 a day versus 20, 30, 40 million. And what's crazy is that the residents are going to be the one footing the bill for this. Our rates are going, to, going up to subsidize these companies. We're paying more for so much less, and it's not right, especially to individuals on fixed and lower incomes who are already struggling with the rising cost of living. What's, even, mo what's even more frustrating is that in industrial users are appealing their rate increases to the Public Utilities Commission, while residents don't have that option. 
And then there's Hillcrest. People live there. They have homes, lives, and a right to continue living in their neighborhood. We can't build a massive facility right next door. Our young people are watching, and we don't understand why our livelihood, the environment, is being traded off for industry profits. It doesn't make sense. We're not going to stand by quietly while our rights to a clean and safe environment are ignored and be put second to whoever has the biggest wallet and influence. We're not indoctrinated. We haven't, we're not against growth and progress. We care about people that actually live here. Please deny this permit. Review it. Look at the worst case scenario. We can strive for approaches that will not put a huge strain on our energy grid, further marginalize the story with black neighborhood, harm our bay, make the city borrow money they don't have, continue to cycle of poor leadership and water resource management, and cause re residential rates to go up and up. We deserve better. We need better. That's why we're here today as a community. Say no to desal. Say no to oligarchy. The people, the community, the environment are going to suffer if we don't. Thank you. Thank you. Dorothy Pena. Dorothy Pena. I am asking for a contested case hearing about the waste permit number WQ00052890000. I am asking you to deny the wastewater permit WQ00052890000. This is not a small project. This is a major project that needs reviewing by EPA. There needs to be an environmental impact study for this proposed permit, as well as a cumulative impact study for all the planned desalination plants. Water issues are not new to Corpus Christi, and drought is common. Our economy used to be very diverse, agriculture, tourism, and fishing, sustain our economy, um, but industry is becoming centralized. What we are seeing is a mismanagement of our drinking water that was sold out to Gulf Coast Ventures for plastic production, which we can't eat. Instead of reprimanding the officials that did not prioritize the taxpayers, now we, the taxpayers, are bailing them out to make a desperate attempt at a, a quote-unquote end of a drought and, and creating drought-proof solutions, all while throwing the Hillcrest One community minute. under the bus yet again. You are securing water for industry, but not the people. Stop fear-mongering our community and claiming it is scientifically sound. The propaganda is sitting outside that poster talking about drought-proof. Are you going to make it rain? Because a drought means no rain. Um, your science changes, and so do your limits of accept uh, acceptability. We are not against progress, but it is not progressive to harm communities of color to manage poor decision-making. It is, however, progressive to meet with your community members that want alternative jobs and solutions and are willing to do those jobs and do that work to create new opportunities for our community. We want real solutions, and this isn't it. All right, thank you. Up next is Daniel Pena. Go ahead and adjust that microphone so we can hear you better, please. Daniel Pena, a resident of Hillcrest. And uh, I'm really, really disturbed about some of the statements that TC2 has made. In particular, you would not consider an a, a, a environmental impact study because when they filed the, for the permit, it wasn't required. Okay? I, I, don't, I don't understand that. We live there. We, we never, they have never approached us to have a discussion about this situation. Not one time. They've never considered that the people that live there never had a conversation with us. I have prepared so many things to say, but you know what? It's just a farcity of this meeting. It's, it's incredible to me. It's incredible to me. And you, for you to make that statement out loud, that you're not following the rules because they uh, filed the permit before those rules were we're in fact uh, in place. You know that that that's really that's really disturbing. I've had my I've lived there four and a half decades, raised my children, my grandchildren, and it wasn't until the ATSDR came in and told the city of Corpus Christi as well as everybody in the neighborhood that there was 150 chemicals in the air in our area. 78407 has the highest rate of birth defects, cancer. Amongst other things that you know, I, I'm just, I'm just, I just can't understand how this happens. And then for the city to come in there and add more, and and that not even be considered. Not even with that. Thank you. Our next group will start with Peter Moore, Don Osborne, Guillermo Gallegos, and Julia Nicholson. This gentleman here, what, what is it that you're doing, sir? What do you? 
you're being you're being a distraction to me. Could, could you take your seat until your name is called? Please take your seat. Thank you. Our next group starts with Peter Moore, Don Osborne, Guillermo Gallegos, and Julia Nicholson. Peter Moore. There's Peter Moore in the room. Peter Moore, I'm a historian. I speak today as a friend of the Hillcrest Residents Association, whose historic neighborhood has been ravaged, and I mean ravaged, by development. For decades, government and industrial developers have encroached on this neighborhood. They've bisected it with roads and bridges. They've poisoned its air, and now they hope to complete its destruction by building a desal plant in it. No reasonable person would deny that Hillcrest has been targeted for this development because it is poor, black, and brown. And yet, despite decades of racist policy and discriminatory treatment, the people of Hillcrest are still here. They've endured, and like anyone who lives in a place and gets attached to it, they want to revitalize their neighborhood. Hillcrest contains at least two significant historic sites. One is New Bayview Cemetery. The other is Crosley Elementary School. You can read more about those and learn about them when you read my written comments. I don't have time to talk about them here. Uh, the Hillcrest Residents Association has a dream of renovating and restoring Crosley, um, turning it into a community center. So we have a neighborhood with significant historical properties, a residents association with a dream to preserve these places and revitalize their neighborhood, a landmark commission that sees this work as a high priority, a historic preservation plan by the city that recognizes the historical character and significance of Hillcrest, yet the powers that be are intent on erasing this neighborhood and its history to make way for more petrochemical industry development. We should be protecting our cultural heritage and investing in communities, schools, and public health, not leveling neighborhoods to bring in more industries that poison our air and water and use up natural resources. As a matter of social justice and basic human decency, I urge you to deny this desalination plant permit and grant a contested case hearing for Hillcrest. Thank you. Thank you. Don Osborne. Okay. As you can see, I'm old. I need more light and I can't get more in here. So, uh, okay. So as someone who's lived during the, the drought and, went, and water rationing of the early 1980s, I have been disappointed and horrified, horrified at our current water, short, water shortage as, and the reasons that we once again are facing these shortages. I am disappointed in the city <coughs> allowing tens of millions of gallons of water to industrial, <coughs> the industry and polluters at the expense of residential users. users. This shortage of water had been addressed by the Mary Road Pipeline 1 and 2 and other measures. I am horrified that the proposed answer to this problem is the Hillcrest neighborhood desalination site. I could not imagine a worse location for this plant and the intake and discharge. The proposed intake site and, and the chemical laced brine discharge site is in the, in the very close proximity to constant loading and unloading volatile organic compounds from and One from minute. barges and ships. There have been many, many, many mishaps in, in loading uh, during these loading procedures. The placement of the intake is subject to, is subject to the uh, intake is subject to uptake these spilled compounds and will result in high concentrations of chemicals in the water for residential users and the release of high concentrations of volatile organic compounds that are harmful substances in our waterways and bay as stream systems. The environmental degradation is in the inevitable. In, in an article published by NEP Guide. Uh, titled Drinking Water Treatment Reverse Osmosis, I'll uh, just cut to the face. Contaminants not removed by RO filtration include dissolved gases such as hydrogen sulfide, some pesticide solvents, organic, uh, volatile organic compound chemicals are not removed by RO. That's fine. Thank you. Up next is Guillermo Gallegos. My name is Guillermo Gallegos. 
There are many things I want to say that I can't fit in two minutes. Things like, does TCEQ know, many, know how many water boils we've had in the last year? Does TCEQ know that industry, despite being the city's biggest water user, has not had to comply with stage one or stage two drought restrictions, despite our reservoirs, you know, being at 70% depleted? Or does TCEQ know that the proposed site is in a historically black neighborhood, Hillcrest, which has a pending Title VI complaint against the city for previous incidents of environmental racism? Or does the city know that our biggest job provider is not, in fact, petrochemicals, but tourism, nursing, and hospitality, which is threatened by pollution caused by DSAC? But I guess I can narrow this all down to, can you all live with yourselves knowing that approving this permit could kill our closed base system, kill our beach, One minute. and eventually kill the whole city? Also, I request a contested hearing for the people of Hillcrest, and I will put that in writing. Thank you. Julia Nicholson. Hello. My name is Julia Nicholson. I live at 4025 Martins Drive in Corpus Christi, Texas. I'm asking you to deny wastewater permit WQ0005289000. This is not a small project. This is a big project. I've spent four years studying environmental science at Texas A&M University Corpus Christi. I'm incredibly fortunate to have received this education and it is therefore my duty to use what I have learned for the betterment of my community. One of the first courses required for all ESI majors is Introduction to Environmental Science. In this course, we perform environmental impact assessments for a theoretical desalination plant, a fraction the size of what is proposed here today. Simply put, the impacts of this proposal will hurt all of us. The quality of our bay will deteriorate regardless of what y'all say from waste discharge. Ecosystems will collapse as they cannot thrive in an acidic, acidic closed bay system. This will encourage even more pollution of our air and water. The health of our citizens will decline, most notably and disproportionately for the people of Hillcrest, who are by no coincidence closest to the proposed plant. There are countless reasons why this proposal does far more harm than good that I cannot explain in the two minutes you've provided. Water is a human right. Water is for the people. We don't have a shortage because of the consumption from the people. We have a shortage because of industry greed. You're failing future generations of students. Leaders, farmers, artists, scientists, parents, and children, the future of Corpus Christi. Because the future of Corpus Christi is not sitting up on this stage. They're right behind me. Thank you. Our next group will start with Kirsten Aguilar. We'll be followed by Arturo Lima. Uh, we will be followed by Ruben. Uh, last name starts with an M. I apologize, Ruben. And then Eli McKay. So Kirsten Aguilar. Hi everyone, my name is Kirsten Aguilar, and I am here today to ask you to deny the wastewater permit WQ0052890. Um, to put it blatantly, the city of Corpus Christi is yet again putting the neighborhood of Hillcrest on a stone slab preparing them for sacrifice. If you think I'm embellishing, look at the case being presented. Look at the people who are talking about it. Um, the city of Corpus Christi single-handedly redlined the neighborhood of Hillcrest in 1944, and they're doing it again and again and again, and they keep on doing it. Um, this is a case of environmental racism. TCQ needs to not pass this permit and do something to protect us. Our sacred water, our key species that exist in Corpus Christi Bay Area. Desalination may not affect each of you immediately, but it will affect Hillcrest. Noise pollution, air pollution, water pollution, ground pollution, health issues such as cancer, asthma, may I continue, um, then the citizens of Corpus Christi will have to pay One for minute. the desalination plant, and they will also have to pay for the damages that it causes once it's all over. Um, yeah, millions and billions of dollars of taxpayer money that is being wasted. I will not stand by and let you kill us, kill Hillcrest. It's murder in the limelight. Since you are all being presented with strong concern, just know that you are turning a natural resource into a bundle of cash. Um, don't let complacency float your boat while you shoot ours down and sink us. Hold yourselves accountable. Why is it that people who are affected the most by the climate crisis are responsible for the least? And the people who are affected the least by climate crisis are responsible for the most. Please do something about it. Thank you. Arturo. Good evening. I am here to express that uh, you can't fool us. You've seen that uh, people are doing their research and are finding out that you are lying to them. The city of Corpus Christi is lying to the residents. 
it's like telling them that even though they're the ones who sold our water to industry, we're going to get you the water you need. We have the water we need. Unfortunately, it's being sold to industry. So therefore, now they want to have us all pay for a desalination plant to give more water to industry. And so I'm very much against that because I live on right in front of the bay and I see it every morning from my window. I see smokestacks, I see flares, my neighbors are getting sick. And we want to build this desalination plant to lure more of that heavy industry to our region. We want to turn it into a sacrifice zone and might as well do it in the sacrifice zone. We've been we've been sacrificing since the 60s, Hillcrest. So I'm here to express that I am against the desalination plant. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ruben? Ruben, spell your last name for me. Yes. Uh, Ruben Munoz. Um, okay, go ahead. Yes. I support the desalination project, and I'll give you a little bit more context. Uh, today, according to the United Nations, there is 700 million people which doesn't have access to drinking water. And it's predicted that uh, 1,800 million people will live under water scarcity by the year 2025. Currently, there are 50,000 desalination plants worldwide in Salad, which represent only 5% of the overall drinking water demand. In some uh, coastal cities, desalination plants provide the only access to drinking water. I have the privilege to work in desalination uh, projects uh, in other countries, and I have seen that before desalination, the drinking water in coastal cities lasts only a few hours per day. And I see the effect in the, in the life of the people, business, economic growth. When the sanitation was proposed, of course, there was a lot of uh, res resistance because of the concern of the environmental impact. However, I can tell you from my experience that after 10 years of operation of this sanitation plan, there is no significant impact of the marine environment, which su successfully achieved the dilution, One the, the dilution criteria approved by the permitted application. The Rhine Deep Chart was continuously monitoring and reported to the environmental authority Scientific investigation have shown that there is no significant impact of the salinity increase because of the natural salinity tolerance of the species and by the inclusion of the neutralization of the chemical on the dedicated wastewater treatment plants. So all of these techniques are applied in this project and presented in the permit. So I support um, the salination project to be approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Eli McKay. Eli McKay. Sorry, actually not what you expected. <clears throat> So I'm gonna do things a little differently because I'm really here for my community and not really for y'all, no offense, but um, if everybody who's comfortable can just close their eyes, take a deep breath in for four seconds, hold it for two and then release it. So that's gonna change the energy in the room because it's really interesting sometimes how love can look like anger but what's even more interesting to me is how greed can look like fear. One thing that I've learned from my community here in Corpus Christi is that there is nothing to fear. Tonight, I uh, was shocked and upset noticing that you limited the comments for two minutes. Um, this may be a lot of people's first time at a TCQ meeting, but it's not mine. And I've been to meetings where you've had hundreds of people signed up. You didn't limit that five minute comment period. So I'm very disappointed in the lack of consistency uh, within these meetings that you're holding. Um, I, find, I find it to be straight fascism. Uh, I'm asking you to deny this permit. Um, there hasn't been an adequate environmental impact study for the proposed permit or a cumulative impact study um, that has been requested years ago. Um, it's, it, you know, people have made a lot of comments. One thing that really struck me is trucking water into cities. You could say that we're trucking water into Corpus Christi already because the majority of people that I know don't drink the water from the tap. They buy it at the store where they have to invest in water things that clean their water, whatever you call that. But uh, it's ridiculous and two minutes is ridiculous. And I will continue coming to these meetings and tracking that because you cannot silence the people because the people will continue to multiply. Thank you. Our next group will start with Bob Stockney. We'll be followed by Mike Colbertson, Alberto Zertek, and Aaron Liebowitz. So Bob Stockney. Yes, my name is Bob Stockney, and I live right here in Corpus Christi, not very far from here. 
I'm here to support the city's efforts to build this plant and provide our communities with a sustainable water resource. Droughts are real, they happen, and we're in one right now. Growth could take many forms, and lack of growth could take many forms as well. This story is personal to me. My daughter graduated from a and Corpus Christi with a degree in education more than 10 years ago, and she's been a teacher in our school system for that whole time. My son, on the other hand, graduated from a and University with a degree in engineering and was able to find some work that was that marginally aligned with his degree, but not his passion. After more than three years of trying to make it work, he left to go find better opportunities, and he took his degree and his wife and he moved to Dallas. The fact is, my son was able to find better paying work and long-term engineering prospects in Dallas because they simply had more opportunity there. One minute. I now have my son and daughter and two grandchildren in Dallas instead of Corpus Christi. And I will bet I'm not the only one here today who has family that had to leave the area for better opportunity. Coincidentally, my son spent two years working on a wet water reservoir in Dallas. You see, Dallas can't just stick a straw in the ocean and convert it to usable water. They must capture it and hold it. We already have lots of water reservoirs. They're not getting filled. We must look to pivot to something else. To me, when we oppose growth, oppose growth just for the sake of limiting industry, you also limit our community's ability to keep their families together. So when they say or say they do not want industry, they're also saying they do not want to provide for you. Growth is not just big industry. It's about everything our community has to offer. It's about being able to have a water burger, a Chick-fil-A sandwich, maybe an H-E-B plus, or maybe be able to shop at the new Target in Portland. That's time. Here, Thank you. Up next I is just have Mike. One last thing to say. Up next, that's time. That's the, thank you. Order, order. That's time. Up next, sir. Your time is up. Take your seat. Thank you. And I want to see your time is up, sir. Home. Thank you. Order. Order. Up next is Mike Colbertson. Good evening, I'm Mike Culbertson, uh, President of Corpus Christi Regional Economic Development Corporation. We have over 130 manufacturing, engineering, on order, Go and companies that care deeply about the future of our region. We're speaking in favor of the application for the de uh, seawater desal. We do not have any more water available to us. Even if we don't bring any more industry, we still need water. A drought-proof water supply is the best option. While this is one, one of the first for desal, it will not be the last. Texas needs water to continue growing. Once, uh, if you're a town or a region stops growing, bad things start to happen. People leave for more opportunities and we leave fewer people to bear the tax burden. We all want a bright future for our kids. And this is one more step we need to take. And it's one more step that Texas needs to take. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Alberto. Alberto, before you get started, do you uh, spell your last name for me? My last name is Satuche, Z-E-R-T-U-C-H-E. My name is Alberto Satuche. I'm Team Hard Life Captain of a YouTube channel, fishing channel, and a bait and tackle shop. I also own a manufacturing and fishing tackle distribution center as well. So my whole deal is off this bay. I live on it. We feed on it. We grow on it. You're sitting here trying to tell me that whatever y'all gonna put back in there is not gonna harm it. I'm sorry, y'all are all lying to yourselves. I've been here my whole life. I've seen what it does right now with the industry that is here. You have brown tide, you have red tide, and all of that will stay in the bays, gets into the air. Everybody that lives around the bay during those time periods have health issues. They get hospitalized for long periods of time. There's also Vibrio, which is a flesh-eating virus that's in the Bay of Corpus Christi. What is this going to do to that? Is it going to enact it even more? Can you answer that? No, you can't. There's a whole bunch of things that y'all are not taking into consideration. And right now, the rest of One us minute. are having to let you know. Have they tr truly looked at that? We will be submitting a contested hearing for us as well as a bait and tackle shop owner. And for those of y'all that don't live here... Y'all need to really ask yourself, are y'all willing to go swimming in that Bay Area? Are you willing to go fishing in that Bay Area? Are you willing to go take your families there? 
Are you willing to go live in Hillcrest where they're planning to put this plant there? Of course not. You're putting it on everybody else. We're not standing by. We're, we will remember this in November as well. We're all voting. Oh, thank you. Up next is Aaron Leibowitz. Hello, my name is Aaron Lebowitz. I live at 6121 Boca Raton Drive here in Corpus Christi. I've lived here my whole life, as have both of my parents, and their parents uh, moved here when they were very young. My whole life, I have been subject to frequent water boils or even bans, not being able to take a shower or drink a good night tea or anything that I should be able to do. And the proposed desalination plants, knowing that in 2017, residential water use in Corpus Christi was only 36%. The rest all went to industry. Brine disposal in the bay causes hypoxia, which is a lack of sufficient amounts of oxygen in the body, resulting from decreasing concentrations of oxygen, which affect all marine organisms. Increasing salinity is inversely proportional to the concentration of dissolved oxygen in the sea. Oxygen-depleted water, water bodies experience mass mortality of mussels, bivalves, and fish, and also disruption to coral reefs. Look, Corpus is a fishing town, famous for its beaches, something we pride ourselves on. Are y'all willing to kill our fish and pollute our bay so much? that our beautiful tourist attracting beaches are compromised? If there's one thing I know about Corpus Christi residents is that we love to fish. If residents knew just how impactful these plants are gonna be on our wildlife, I do not think they would support it. The proposed desal plants in Corpus would have a combined intake of 317 billion gallons per year and discharge 213 of those gallons, meaning only a third of the, uh, one third of the intake is actually usable. The rest is all dumped back into the water supply. That's and fine, thank you. Thank you. Our next group will start with Armin and Alex. Our next group will start with Armin and Alex. He'll be followed by Araceli Mart Martinez, uh, Al Ariola Jr., and then Shane Bonnet. Armin and Alex. Howdy, my name is Armand Alex. Let's just be real. Uh, this desalination plant is an uh, invitation to more industry. And because of that, I'd like to take a moment of silence for our friends and family members and neighbors that we have lost all along refinery row here in Corpus Christi because of the polluters. Moment of silence, please. This is a bad deal for the people of Corpus Christi. And I want TCQ to know that. And I want you too to know that as well. I've seen you guys in City Hall when I visit often. And it's such a shame that you live here in the city as well, but you want to subject us to this shame. I hope it, uh, I hope it hurts to sleep at night as right now I am not in such great health, but I wouldn't miss this because I love my community. I love my mother. I love my grandmother. But my father, I lost him in my senior year of high school. And one of my earliest memories of living in Corpus Christi was him and I walking along our shorelines in Corpus Christi Bay. If he could see what we are about to lose because of the greed of the fossil fuel industry, the reality is they're paying our public servants they're paying off some of our city workers. This is a project for polluters, not for the people of Corpus Christi. The water to be produced is for oil and gas, not for the people of Corpus Christi. TCEQ, you need to say no. That's fine, thank you. Thank you. Up next is our Stratton That's my son, by the way. 
My name is Araceli Martinez, and I am currently went back to school after 20 some years. Okay, I'm not leaving the city. I love the city. I've been here for 42 years, like I said. I love the fact that my son, 24 years old, could have left, but he said no, because I believe in my community. I believe in this city. He loves this community. And he's only 24 years old, guys. Hello, 24 years old. And I am here, I could have been somewhere else, but I am here, why? Because I love my neighbors. Okay, and I say no to Desal, guys. Please listen to this community. Okay, that's what you need to listen to. Not people that come from elsewhere and want to, you know, desal. Not no. Listen to the community, the people that live here that have been here for so long. It's not fair. Wonderful. Hillcrest. I used to go out there when I was a teenager. My mama could tell you, Mija, I don't want you going over there. Why? Well, Mija, you know, I just don't go. No, mom, I'm gonna go. Why? Because they're brown folks. I'm Mexicana, and I hate going by there, and it's a ghost town. There used to be people just all in the, in the street, hanging out at the barbershop, you know, different little restaurants that were owned by mom and pops. They're all gone. It's so sad, guys. Please say no, and listen to the community, because this is who lives in it. Thank you. Thank you. Al Mariola Jr. Is that appropriate? Sorry. Go ahead. Al Ariola Jr. How are you doing? Thank you for your time this evening. My name is Al Ariola Jr. I come before you representing the United Corpus Christi Chamber of Commerce. The United Chamber has long advocated for reliable and affordable water resources for our drought prone region. Developing seawater desalination will ensure a drought proof water supply that will enable the region its citizens and businesses to thrive and prosper now and in the future. Seawater desalination is a viable option for our for the 500,000 residents of the Coastal Bend region, supported by the City of Corpus Christi's water resources and infrastructure. On behalf of our over 1,000 members, we would like to express support to uh, for the City of Corpus Christi's permit for the proposed seawater desalination plant, and we encourage this commission to move expeditiously to approve the application. Thank you for considering this request. Thank you. Up next is Shane Bonnet. Good evening. Um, my name is Shane Bonneau, and I'm here to represent the Texas chapter of the Coastal Conservation Association. We're a uh, marine conservation organization with a stated purpose to conserve, promote, and enhance the present and future availability of coastal fishery resources for the benefit and enjoyment of the general public. CCA Texas, is opposed to this permit. We recognize, we, we recognize that sound desalination technology is crucial in securing dependable freshwater sources for Texas. But in the interest of coastal fishery resources, accepted marine science and our state admission mandates that the intake and discharge points be located offshore to minimize long-term impacts to the estuary. The environmental and ecological risks of siting a desal facility within an estuary are far too great, adversely affecting native flora and fauna in a system that's already currently under significant stress with regards to increasing ambient salinities. One minute. We have grave concerns for the setting of uh, setting a precedent of locating a facility inside of an estuary and what that could mean permitting of future desal locations, not only in the coastal bend, but across the state of Texas. Again, we understand the need to supply industries and municipalities in the coastal bend with a consistent supply, a dependable supply of freshwater. Our recommendation is that desal facilities operate with intakes and discharges offshore. Thank you. Thank you. Our next group will start with Suzanne Gallagher, who will be followed by Laramie Fain. Bren Glover and Sereta Nerez James. I apologize, Suzanne Gallagher. Hi there. I want to say that um, I have was born and raised here. I am a child of industry. My dad worked at the refinery for his whole life. My mother was a biochemist and was there when, um, at the time, CCPC now Lyondale opened. 
And my stepfather came from Midland to open that, uh, to open that same facility. So uh, I know how um, I, I have benefited from this, but I also know how things go wrong and things don't work the way they're supposed to. Machinery fails. And um, I'm against magical thinking. I'm here to represent uh, concerned citizens of Robstown and Cal Allen. I'll be seeing BTCEQ people again um, before too long because the proposed ammonia plant that, that um, the city has been in on, the Corpus Christi and Robstown and the port, everybody that wants to bring this is going to need um, between eight and 10 million gallons a day. I want to say that a few months ago, I'm embarrassed to say I didn't One know minute. anything about desal. I, in fact, if you would have run it by me, I probably would have said it sounds like a good idea. Um, yes, we need more water. And yeah, there's a lot of seawater out there. But since then, I've become educated. Um, and as the speaker a few minutes ago said, um, if it were out in the Gulf, that might be one thing. Uh, but having the intake and the, where it throws the water back out right together and also in an enclosed shallow bay area where water doesn't circulate well is nonsensical. To say that it would not affect the salinity is magical thinking. It's magical thinking to keep saying we're going to bring all these things here and it's not going to affect our environment. And people that live here and that grew up here love this bay and love the area. So no magical thinking. Let's call it what it is. Thank you. Larry Fang. My name is Larry Fang, Corpus Christi, Texas. I submitted my opposition to this permit in writing. And all I really had to say to you was each and every one of you should feel honored that you got to hear this community speak tonight. And I hope that you heard what we had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Bryn Glover and I am a 22 year old college student. Um, Corpus Christi has been my home for almost my whole life. I grew up surfing and admiring the beauty of our bay and our gulf. Um, this desalination plant is, it's not a small project. It's a ginormous project with ginormous consequences. Um, I'm asking that you deny the wastewater permit number WQ0005289000. I'm asking for a contested case hearing about the waste permit number WQ0005289000. There needs to be an environmental impact study for this proposed permit. Um, as well as a cumul cum cumulative impact study for all the future plant desalination plants. Um, this desal plant will be located in a historically black community um, that has already been attacked countless times by industri in industry expansion, bridges, freeways, and not to mention the serious health risks that they face and the rest of Corpus also faces um, that include cancer, chronic health risks, uh, diseases, birth defects, and asthma, as well as countless others. Um, if this desal plant is placed in this area, these issues will worsen. They will not get better. Um, and I, I ask you, like, well, what more will you subject us to? What more will you subject the Hillcrest community to? I am in awe, and I hope that you feel shame. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sarada Nanya James. I live at 7326. Uh, 73, Sorry, I can't read something, but... Uh, Gold Ridge Road here in Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, this is not a small project. This is a major project. I am asking that you deny the wastewater permit WQ 00052890000. I am asking for a contested case hearing about this waste permit number. Uh, there needs to be an environmental impact study. If you say you are a leader of this community, I understand that an application process that EIS is not required. That is the EPA's words correct, is not required at that stage. But as a leader, you should have done it anyway. Okay? Yeah. You should have done it anyway if you wanted us to even begin to believe you. So you say that people leave. I got my master's here. I came to Corpus Christi to get my master's. So I have studied in these veins that you talk about. I agree that there are species that live in extreme environments, but those have evolved and adapted over a long time. And that is in a different system. What I'm asking you right now is I understand as a scientist, you look at a paper and you don't see the people. 
You see numbers and you see billions of gallons in waters, but you don't see the people. I chose to come back to Corpus Christi. I chose to have my child here. Actually, she goes to school with your children, okay? But you don't see the people. And as a scientist, we have the responsibility to use our knowledge, to use our knowledge for a better way to do things. We've already heard everything. I've talked to all the scientists. Some of them I even went to school with. They're telling us this is not going to work. And honestly, how are you going to use it yourself? The same amount of brine that we take out of salt, we're going to put back into the bay, but aren't you taking out the water? How is that not going to increase the salinity? And how is that not going to have a That's time. Thank you. Uh, our next group will start with Amanda Rose. We'll be followed by Maggie Peacock, Marissa Spinelli, and Sandra Love Sanchez. Amanda Rose. Amanda Rose. Hi, I'm Amanda Rose. I live here in Corpus Christi and nobody has paid me to be here. <laughs> I am actually not against desalination. I am against dumb desalination. And so I oppose this. I oppose this permit because I think it's a little dumb. I have been, this, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm not an oceanographer. I am a graduate student. I study uh, environmental science, I'm working on my master's, and uh, my focus is water quality. So this semester, I have been researching. I've read dozens and dozens of really boring peer-reviewed research on this topic, the environmental impact of desalination. Because I want to know, what is this going to do to our bay? And the answer is, we don't know, because every place is different from Corpus Christi. Every study I read basically said it depends One on minute. where you are, and further environmental study is necessary. Every study said that. So I decided to look at the studies that Freeze and Nichols used. Uh, they got paid to do that. Um, they love to call out San Diego, the Claude Bud Lewis Carlsbad desalination plant, about its minimal impact on the environment, even though it does see um, increased salinity. I want you to know that they are comparing us to a place where the uh, intake and outfall is the Pacific Ocean. And I am not an oceanographer, but I think the Pacific Ocean is larger than Corpus Christi Bay. The other site is Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is like our, our, plate, our bay because it is productive, it's nutrient rich. Um, but there's a glaring difference, and I urge you to Google it and look at the map of Tampa Bay because they don't have something we do, and it's a giant barrier island. That's nice. Thank you. Up next is Maggie Peacock. Before I start, can y'all all look at me? I notice sometimes y'all get on y'all's phones. I want y'all to listen to the community members. Um, appar apparently, according to a previous commenter, only a small number of us are anti desal But to all of us, if you're willing and able and do not want desal in our community, I want y'all to stand up. We need to show them that we are not a small majority. Do not listen to the people who will profit from projects like these. Listen to the community members. We are going to win. Yeah, the TCEQ mission statement reads, TCEQ strives to protect our state's public health and natural resources consistent with sustainable economic development. Our goal is clean air, clean water, and safe management of waste. Approving this wastewater permit would inextricably go against everything their statement says. The historic Hillcrest neighborhood is already repeatedly being attacked by industrial build-out, bridges, interstate highway cutoffs, sewage treatment plants, and excessive exposures to pollution. That is a public health issue. One minute. And I say all this because desalination will lead to further fossil fuel expansion. It's going to bring so many more destructive industries, like Exxon, who uses over 18 million gallons of water a day to overburden communities here in the coastal bend. And the, and the industry users in Corpus use 80% of our water. And yet, community members are going to bear the brunt of the cost by significantly impacting water rates. 
I, I need to skip because, God, we only have two minutes. Not to mention, in the 80s, Hillcrest residents sued refineries that were, gro- that were growing nearby and won a settlement that would put space between the residents and the toxic industry. However, the proposed desal plant would be placed in that buffer zone. If you approve the dis- discharge permit, you will deem profit more important than clean air and clean water. Dumping over 50 million gallons of sludge a day with who knows what chemicals into our bay every day? In a bay that takes over a year for new white water to cycle through, that is going to kill our bay and everything that it relies on. Thank you. We might be the Up next is Marissa Spinelli. Next time. Thank you. Up next is Marissa Spinelli. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Order. Order. Marissa Spinelli. My name is Marissa Spinelli, and while I commend the efforts to secure a reliable water source for our community, I am deeply concerned about the potential impact on our water quality, community health, and ecological integrity. If desalination and Hillcrest proceeds beside our efforts, please consider the following. Should this permit proceed, it is crucial to strive for the best environmental impact possible. We mustn't overlook the repercussions of our actions, particularly in a community like Hillcrest already facing injustice as is. D-South plants, respectively, tried to decrease their impact by doing offshore piping or blending water, but that does not address the long-term impacts, period. Discharging highly saline will devastate ecosystems, impacting tourism, fishing, and food resources, ultimately harming our community, economy, and biosphere for the full and foreseeable future. All ecosystems provide services for us, erosion prevention, water filtration. It is our best interest to maintain them and protect them as we want to reap their rewards they give us naturally. I would like to emphasize the risk of dependency on desal, diverting attention from addressing underlying water scarcity issues. If we're approaching population increase as we do it now, reaching our maximum in 2050, our carrying capacity, what happens then? More desal? We can't, if we become dependent on it, why are we not investing into our futures now? If in this rapidly evolving landscape, we must exercise caution, delaying or denying permits until we can develop environmentally sound brine management strategies. Exploring alternatives like brine manufacturing could offer more sustainable options. I don't think the proposed technology we have now is what we need to meet these goals. In conclusion, let's approach desalination permitting with care, prioritizing innovation and sustainability. By delaying permits until comprehensive solutions are realized, we can safeguard our ecosystems while meeting community needs. Thank you for your attention, and I urge all stakeholders to pursue That's responsible time. solutions. Thank you. Next is Sandra Love Sanchez. Sandra Love Sanchez. Hi, my name is uh, Sandra Love Sanchez, and I am with the Indigenous Peoples of the Coastal Bend. Uh, I graduated with my bachelor's in communications, and I have my master's in policy and government. The reason why I mentioned that is because you're not dealing with stupid people in this room. We are not dense. We are very smart. And we have read everything that is happening in these documents. So I am opposed to the desalination plant, and I request a contested, a contested case hearing. I've been here before to tell you the science and extreme impact it will have on our bay. I've been here before to tell you about the economic failure this will be. Now I will tell you another thing. Your standard and policies are wrong. It's causing environmental racism. You just threw out a Native person, by the way, earlier with your policies and rules. So they don't matter when they're causing harm to indigenous, black, and people of color neighborhoods. That was wrong. This is our land, and you threw somebody out that was native. That is super wrong. All these policies and standards are hurting the land and the water and the people. We are not a sacrifice zone. We stand with Hillcrest. You are on the wrong side of history. And well, we aren't going anywhere. None of us are. As you can see, as many people that stood up were still here. People will vote out all these decision makers and all the appointees that have been are, are that here on these tables. You will be replaced. Just watch. Thank you. Our next group will start with Ivan Sotelo, followed by Joey Gonzalez the fourth, uh, Taylor Thorpe, and Cody Benavides. Ivan Sotelo. Hi, my name is Ivan Sotelo. Uh, I work here as a researcher uh, in social psychology here at Texas A&M University. More specifically, I research the uh, identity formation and cultural identities of black and brown people here in the US. Uh, here at, um, I make a living by analyzing the lives of people here in Corpus Christi, uh, like those who live at Hillcrest. 
Uh, I've heard nothing but horror story after horror story since I first arrived here in Corpus Christi two years ago of how the Hillcrest community has been made, has been made the victim time and time again to industry and displacement. I've heard a plethora of information for and against the passing of this permit as a solution to our water scarcity problems. Despite all of this, I have used my resources as not only a scholar, but as a citizen, as a civilian. I have read scientific journal after scientific journal published by scholars, not only at this university, but at others around the nation that have referred to the dangers of heavy metals, anti-fouling agents, and, de and decreased oxygen content as, res as a result of chlorine neutralization processes associated with reverse osmosis. Ocean water desalinate desalinization has One too minute. great a potential risk on the lives and lands here in Corpus Christi. And I personally believe that reverse osmosis ocean water desalinization is not sustainable for either. I am standing against the passing of this permit. This is not a small project. This is a large project that needs approval by EPA and there needs to be an environmental impact study. Thank you. Thank you. Joey Gonzalez. Joey Gonzalez. Taylor Thorpe. Uh, hello, Taylor Thorpe. Um, to start, I think to address a previous commenter talking about the need for a drought-proof water supply, can anybody tell me why we're in a drought and have no water? Bingo! We are so welcome here. I love our community. I am here to urge you to reject the dumping permit for the desalination plant. I'm graduating from Tammy CC with a degree in environmental science in May, and just like Julia told you guys earlier, our first large project as freshmen, 18 year olds, was to write up a plan if a desal plant was to be placed connected to Arbit. Some things we had to consider, the multiple endangered species populations that call Corpus Christi Bay home, the indigenous land that the city was and